Welcome back for another great episode of the Fisherman's Guide. We're having a lot of fun down here in Port Sulphur, Louisiana with Bow Fishing Unlimited, shooting redfish after dark. Another thing that they got down here, Nutrats. They tear the marsh up. We brought Kevin Riley along with us. He brought some toys, and we're gonna see if we can help them solve that problem. Fisherman's Guide brought to you by the Silver Slipper Casino. Today's episode sponsored by Dad Super Pump, Southern Building Supply, The Hook, Gulf Coast Cuisine, Oddball Tackle, Cedar Swamp Outfitters, Ocean Marine, Sports Trail Trailers, Sportsman Marine, Parker Poles, and Sport Optics. All right, folks. About to cross the mighty Mississippi River. We are at the Bell Chase Scarsdale Ferry on the back side of Chalmette. We're gonna get across this river and we're gonna be in Bell Chase and we're gonna be about an hour away from Bow Fishing Unlimited. I gotta tell you, I have never been as excited about going to film as I am about this show. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yes, ma'am. I need to purchase a uh, Louisiana license. I need a one-day small game and migratory bird license. What day do you need it for? Today. So, you know, everybody's seen the footage on TV of the Asian carp jumping out of the water, and that's a highly invasive species. They've kind of taken over, and it was the opposite of what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Nutrax. Kind of the same thing. Um, one of the things that was brought here a long time ago, uh, they had a, a purpose. Um, their fur got a really nice fur. Um, so they raised them on farms. They were brought from overseas. Um, of course, they got out. You know, you have had hurricanes, stuff like that. New threats get out into the marsh. They reproduce like crazy, like rabbits. So we've got tons of them out here, um, which was all right at the beginning because they were hunting them in the wild then, um, making money, you know. Um, so they became, got to the point where they weren't too popular. Uh, nobody liked the idea of wearing a neutral rat for a coat, you know, women <laughs> discovered what it actually was or wrote it. So before you know it, they didn't want them no more. So all they did was populate, populate, populate. Um, now it's one of the biggest problems when it comes to coastal erosion. They will chew up and uh, we may be able to show you later on what a neutral will do to the marsh. I mean, there's places out there all over just bare ground. They tear up the grass, dig holes in the ground. Um, so now there's actually a, a bounty on them. There's actually a bounty, $5 a tail. You can go out, kill them uh, with the right permits and everything, uh, sell them and for their tail, and the state will pay you $5 a tail wow. to, just to get rid of them. So, I mean, um, it's almost an epidemic. It, it's gotten to the point that it's so bad, and we all know about coastal erosion. It's taking the marsh away from us, but it's my understanding, and tell me if I'm wrong, don't they eat the roots out of the grass and kill the grass? Oh yeah, I mean you can, you can. they'll just level an area, usually right along the water, you'll see in it, you know, beautiful grass and you'll get to a spot, it's bald, it almost looks like pigs were in there just rooting everything mm -hmm. up. And uh, that, that's what they are, little miniature pigs, and pigs are a problem out here in the marsh too actually. Yep. They're doing the same thing. But um, I mean they need to be gone. At least got to control the population, cut them down, try to save as much as we can, huh? That's right. Let's see what we can do about that. Roger that. <laughs> invasive species are a species that's not native to the area you're in. Uh, invasive species can get uh, introduced to an area either by uh, intentionally 
Uh, it's sort of like the water hyacinth. Uh, it was a really popular ornamental and it got introduced uh, early in the 1900s at the World Fair down in uh, Louisiana. Uh, it also can be uh, kudzu, another great example of an uh, introduced species that became invasive and that the uh, highway department brought them in for erosion control on uh, uh, interstate and highways edges. Uh, they can also be introduced unintentionally. Uh, such as the fire ants that came on board through Mobile in the shipping industry or Kogon grass that did the same thing. It came in shipping crates uh, from the Mobile shipping industry or the zebra mussel up in the uh, northern part of the uh, United States uh, introduced in the, by ship ballast uh, from Europe. So there's a variety of ways that invasives can come in the area. And in general, invasive species are really generalist. And what that means, they can adapt to a wide variety of uh, different habitats, ecosystems. They usually have a can handle a wide range of uh, temperature differences and variations. Uh, they're usually very prolif prolific uh, reproducers, so they're, they're very aggressive. They can take over an area really quick and uh, compete with those native species in the area. Most of the time, they don't have a lot of natural enemies whenever they come into a new area, so they don't have a lot of natural predation. And they love, uh, they love disrupted habitat. So if you have a pristine area that's full of good natives, uh, you go in and you do some clear cutting or for a construction project, oftentimes you'll see invasive species come into those disturbed areas. So with the nutria in, a, in a, a, uh, one of our tidal marsh areas, they come in and they eat those roots and uh, tubers of the marsh grass. And so basically that kills the plants they're eating on. So if they come in an area and they, they eat, we'll just say like a 10 square foot area, that basically will lower the elevation of that, of that marsh in that area, allowing tidal waters to come in, and actually uh, it changes the plant composition of the marsh that can grow there, or eradicate it totally, and, and you won't, it'll, you'll lose marsh. So that's some of the negative impacts that nutrients have on our salt marshes. In my opinion, in Louisiana and Mississippi, we're not necessarily winning the battle of controlling the nutria population. Once an invasive species is established in an area, it's very difficult to get control of that population. And that's, what the, that's the case with nutria in our area. Come on down to the Silver Slipper. Hi, this is John from the Silver Slipper, where the casino action is always lively and fun. Now you already know that we're passionate about our food. And I'm sure you'll be able to find your favorite table game in the newest slot games available whenever you visit us. So now we're happy to introduce our beautiful new beachside hotel with 129 spacious rooms and suites. So for great fun, food, and awesome views, come on down to the Silver Slipper. Pass a good time at the Silver Slipper. Building a new home? Build it with brick and roofing from Southern Building Supply. Come see our showroom on County Farm Road in Gulfport. We have a wide range of brick in the most popular styles and colors, and our selection of high-quality shingles can add years to the life of your new roof. Southern Building Supply offers on-site delivery of your new brick and rooftop delivery of your new shingles. We're the only locally-owned roofing and brick company. Call us today, 228-539-8380, Southern Building Supply. We are just north of uh, Happy Jacks where our lodge is. We've uh, ran north about five miles. We're at a place called Magnolia. Um, this area here is somewhere we fish in these conditions. Obviously the wind's blowing about 20 miles an hour straight out to south. We have high water. Um, these ponds hold a lot of grass. So we're gonna, you know, the action's gonna be a little bit slow tonight. We're gonna get some good clear shots. some great toys down here for this weekend. We're going to shoot some Nutra. We've got the Colt 6920 with the EOTech setting on top, halo sight, uh, flashlight, collapsible stock. We're ready to shoot with that in 223 or 556. Five, we got the Benelli pump and an M2 with the ghost ring sights, that gun right there. 
with the 12 gauge, man, that's gonna be awesome to shoot with. We also got the Benelli Semi-Auto with the extended tube on it, that right there with the collapsible stock on it, and those are all Benelli parts. Let me tell you what, that's gonna be so much fun. I mean, we're just gonna have a ball with that right there. Now, what's that so, last one out there? That last one's gonna be the fun one. That's gonna be the Kel-Tec. Uh, that's got uh, the twin tubes on the bottom. It's a single barrel, but twin tubes. Holds 12 rounds. Well, we're gonna pump it up today. We're gonna pump it up with the Aguila 12 gauge mini shells. It's gonna make it 24 rounds with this little mini shell, a double alt buck. So we ought to have a good time with that with 12 rounds. That's a pump gun. We're gonna, we got a sun optics laser with flashlight on the bottom of it. Every one of these things are tricked out as far as we can trick them out, and we're ready to kill some neutral out there on the bayou. Now, wait a minute. 24 12 gauge double op buck shit. I might be able to hit something. If you're lucky, you might be able to. I know you're a good fisherman, <laughs> but we're going to teach you how to shoot. You know? All of these, so, you can get any any one of these guns from Dad's. We've Super got them all in stock right now today. You come on in and get one over you want. Sweet. I'm so, ready to play with it. Which uh, one are you going to let me shoot? Um, I'm going to let you shoot that Benelli Automatic over there if you're lucky tonight. It works for me. You know, so I'm ready to go. Let's, Let's go. go Dad's Supon, one of the largest Benelli dealers on the coast and in Mississippi. Y'all come see us. We are taking back the Louisiana Marsh one rat at a time. Kevin's done mowed down two. I ain't even got a shot off yet. Come on, baby. I think this one right there. Right there. Get him. There you go. Woo! That's what I'm talking about, baby. Ronnie is on the board. Fred, there he is. I just, there? he kicked up a little mud. He's kicking. Right there, right there, straight ahead. Right there. <laughs> yeah, we're talking here, boys. Good hey, job, Ronnie. now it's a party. We might be able to get that one. Is that him pushing his well right there? Watch him, he's about to pop off. Push him in the well just like a redfish. Watch him, right close to the bank. He's gonna pop up. Right up here to the left. Back up, Kev. Right here, guys, right here, guys, right there, right here. Get him, Kev! Got him, got him! Close. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about, baby. Hey! Hey! Huh? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, baby. I'll take, I'll take new trash any day of the week. It's better deer hunting any, any day. Folks, taking back Plaquemines Parish one rat at a time. <laughs> one rat, rat at, at a time. time. shooting the Benelli pump and an M2 and he's shooting a semi-auto with a collapsible stock and extended tube. Um, these guns with Picatinny rails and ghost ring sights are great guns to go hunting with. Hold on, hold on, it's been around. <laughs> We're running down this log stretch. 
Strait Canal. We spotted the first Nutriac, came off of a plane. Kevin got a shot on him. It all broke loose. They started showing up everywhere. One popped up right beside the boat. I think I managed one. You got what, three? Somewhere right in there. We're, we're not, they, they all started popping up out of everywhere. Tonight we got about a 15 mile an hour wind almost out of the due south. So Captain Jeremy's really smart when Allie set us up on this. He's got us in a canal that runs east and west. So it's, it's allowing the grass to block that wind. So we've got calmer water. It's easier to spot these things. Believe it or not, it's a big nutrient, but they can still be hard to see. looking for the redfish you know you got to look for the water moving first then you zero in on what your target is make sure it's a nutrient take him out how much do you have to lead them depends how fast they're moving Up here, he's up there, he's up there, going up. Scaring him back in the water. <laughs> I don't know, he ain't that small. Pretty one there, boy. That's good in there, Paul Paul. Man, I don't even see no bullet holes in him. I think y'all just scared him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it anywhere it comes. Well, that one right there, man, he wanted to be elusive. So we had to shoot at him about five, six times. We had to scare him back in the water so we could uh, yeah, make sure we got him on the last shot. Ronnie took the last shot, took him out on the last shot. We're saving the parish one rat at a time. Kevin, I bet you never thought being an environmentalist felt so good. It's, it's a lot of fun being an environmentalist. They're not, a, they're not the most beautiful animal in the world. Um, but it is helping out the, the local environment down here. Uh, when you get rid of them, they're a pest, they're a nuisance, they tear up the earth down here, they tear up all the, the levees. You know, these are something that they need to eradicate down here. And uh, we gave it our best shot to do away with a bunch of them for them tonight. Just like money. For your next outing, freshwater, saltwater, inshore or offshore, Sea the Swamp's got the gear that works. When it comes to boating, most folks want more features for less cost. And that's what Sportsman Boats is all about. With yacht caliber components, the Sportsman Boats lineup offers bay boats, center consoles, 
plus tournament class and open cockpit models. To find the perfect fishing machine that puts your family first, contact your nearest Sportsman Boats dealer and discover that with a Sportsman Boat, you can have it all. There was one new rat. We saw him, he was on top, he immediately went underwater. He probably ran about 20, 30 feet underwater. We tracked him all the way up. The minute he popped up, Ronnie Daniels popped him with that Benelli semi-auto. Let me tell you what, it was a great shot. It was a lot of fun tracking him underwater. Yeah, he's right here. Is yeah. that him? Right here. Oh yeah, I do. That's a good net. All right, so we spotted the new rat. He dove down. We were on top of him, but we could see him just under the water. I took a shot, didn't get to him. I don't know if it slowed the pellets down or what. Second shot, we waited for him to pop his head up out of the water. He won't be eating any more roots, I can promise you that. It's been a while since I was able to come out here and sit up here and have this much fun. Usually I'm back there <laughs> watching everybody else have fun. Hey guys, we just took out a couple new traps. Captain Jeremy's going to get us on another spot. Y'all stick around. We'll be right back. The Fisherman's Guide Pro Tips, presented by Dad's Super Pond. Well, I tell you what, we've had a lot of fun fishing today, but it's time for another pro tip brought to you by Dad's Super Pond. I got my good buddy Brad Parker here with me today. He is the man that is responsible for building these incredible rods that we use on the show. My Sportsman Masters 247 has got rod lockers. I can keep 10 rods in those rod lockers, but one of the things you want to do is protect your equipment. You don't want to just go to sliding this rod into those tubes because you could damage your guides. Brad's going to show us a little tip to make sure that you don't tear your rod up putting it away. If you're going to put your rod in a rod locker, it's all up, the tips are all stored in tubes. It's like a PVC pipe. If you put the rod in with the guides facing down, you'll end up breaking your guides off. Put your guides oriented up, push down into the tube, and you, as you slide it in, you'll make sure that your guides clear the tube when you put your rod in. So make sure they clear that top edge of the tube. And another thing you were telling me is a rod sock, if you want to utilize those, is another good way to keep them safe, right? It is. A rod sock will not only help you keep from breaking them off, it'll protect the finish of the rod. Hey, y'all stick around. We're going to go catch some more fish. Come on down to the Silver Slipper. Hi, this is John from the Silver Slipper, where the casino action is always lively and fun. Now, you already know that we're passionate about our food. And I'm sure you'll be able to find your favorite table game in the newest slot games available whenever you visit us. So now we're happy to introduce our beautiful new beachside hotel with 129 spacious rooms and suites. So for great fun, food, and awesome views, come on down to the Silver Slipper. Have a good time at the Silver Slipper. For over 80 years, serious anglers have depended on Penn. You can too. When you get that bite of a lifetime, be confident knowing that Penn is with you. Penn, let the battle begin. Hey y'all, I'm Corey Hudson, owner of Hook Gulf Coast Cuisine. We're located on Davis Avenue, right here in Pass Christian. Welcome. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and be prepared to get hooked on Hook Gulf Coast Cuisine. Hey everybody, Chef Corey Hudson here with Hook Gulf Coast Cuisine. Today we're cooking Baby Brin's Shrimp and Grits. Here at the restaurant we offer shrimp and grits a couple different ways. On our brunch menu we do it more of a seafood broth over creamy grits and then on our dinner menu we do it with fried grit cakes with a creamy sauce with shrimp and bacon, spinach, and tomatoes. For any shrimp and grit recipe or pasta dish, I like to devein the shrimp and take the tails off. Nobody wants to get in there and dig around and try to get the tails off with a fork and a knife. 
And whenever you butterfly a shrimp, it just looks better on the plate. The presentation, it just, I feel like the shrimp kind of blows up. It kind of doubles in size. It just looks pretty on the plate. Frying the grit cakes versus using creamy grits just offers more body, more texture to the dish. It's like you're cutting into a piece of fish rather than it's like soup or a, you know, a chowder, if you will. Now with these grits, they're very simple to make. Anybody can do it. All you do is just make your regular instant grits. And then whenever they're done, you just pour them into a sheet pan and cool them overnight. Now you gotta kinda plan ahead if you wanna cook this at home. Just make sure you give yourself enough time for the grits to set. But once they set, you can just, they'll fall right out of the pan and you can slice them. You can even use cookie cutters if you wanna be cute with it. I use triangles because I use a rectangular pan and we, we have no waste that way. But you bread them just like we do everything else. We dredge them in white, seasoned white flour into the egg wash and then the seasoned corn flour. And they're pretty dense, so they'll take a little bit longer in the fryer. But they'll go for about four minutes to 350 degrees. But while those are going, we're gonna start our sauce. Now the main ingredient in this is the shrimp. So we live here on the coast. We got an ocean full of the shrimp. We're gonna wanna use a nice jumbo size, like a 1620 or a 2125. If you don't know what that means, that's the the count per pound. So 2125 means there's 21 shrimp, 25 shrimp per pound. But this dish, we're gonna use about eight shrimp, 2125, tailless, deveined. And we're gonna put them in a medium sized skillet with a little olive oil. And we're gonna turn it on for about two minutes. We're gonna saute it. Then we're gonna add two tablespoons of bacon bits, six halved cherry tomatoes, and then we're going to add a pinch of white flour. That white flour and that butter oil that's in the pan is going to create somewhat of a roux. It's going to thicken the sauce. So then we're going to add about a half a cup of heavy cream. And once that comes to a boil, we're gonna add our chopped baby spinach, about one cup. It's gonna wilt down. A lot of that sauce is just gonna eat that spinach up. So you can actually use two cups if you really like spinach. Once that starts to thicken up, it's pretty much done. You just season it, salt and pepper, a little Creole seasoning if you want. And then we're just gonna pour it over our fried grit cakes. And this is my Southern Classic Baby Brin's Shrimp and Grits. The Fisherman's Guide brought to you by the Silver Slipper Casino. Today's episode sponsored by Dad Super Farm, Southern Building Supply, The Hook, Gulf Coast Cuisine, Oddball Tackle, Cedar Swamp Outfitters, Ocean Marine, Sports Trail Trailers, Sportsman Marine, Parker Poles, and Sport Optics.